Jason Kenny set up something called the War Room. And what the War Room is, it was set up to deal with what they call foreign funded environmentalists, which if for those who don't know, so I do a podcast called uh, Imperial News, which is also the name of my Twitch uh, channel. One of our Patreon tiers is the foreign funded environmentalist tier of the Patreon. And it comes from this bullshit. And Ezra Levant, who we cover on our show, always talks about the, the four evil foreign fund, funded environmentalists that are out there manipulating us. So this, this doesn't get talked about much, but the only reason I want to highlight it is just because of the irony of it, which is we just got over the whole fucking Dr. Seuss stuff and all the crazy stuff about like cancel culture coming for, for uh, uh, what was Mr. Potato Head, but is now like gender neutral Potato Head and Dr. Seuss and all these companies are so woke and like, where's the culture? Everyone's being canceled. And yet they never focus on the fact that in Alberta, the United Conservative Party has a war room set up to, to promote oil industries. And, and one of the things that they're doing is spending time attacking a Netflix film. So I'll show you the... <laughs> Let's find the... Oh my god. Oh, we should read this. Oh, we should read this. Oh my god. Lorne fucking Gunter, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> for people who listen to the podcast, they're going to know who Lorne Gunter is. Otherwise, I wouldn't expect you to know who Lorne Gunter is. Lorne, Lorne Gunter is a guy who goes on Rebel News every once in a while. And he gives the old... He's got like a super duper like, I'm an old man folksy kind of voice. Lorne Gunter. <laughs> like he's a prospector or some shit. And uh, he's always on the show to promote uh, oil and gas companies. And so my guess is this is, this is the exact same thing we're going to talk about with Jason Kenney. But this is, this is the poster. And I, I think the most concerning thing is that this is clearly a family. And, uh, you know, Bigfoot, you know, is uh, Bigfoot's having intimate relationships with a human and they've created kids. So I actually think what's more concerning is the cross- species replication here might be a little bit concerning but <laughs> and hopefully the bear maybe the bear's involved you know he seems like he's in the age of consent so it's all right you know they're all they're all consent in here having a good time but either way <laughs> the thing is this movie apparently i haven't seen it i think rachel did you see that bigfoot movie I think Rachel played it for the kids. I don't know if she actually watched it. She made a point. She's like, you know what? If it's going to spread environmental stuff, we're going to share it with the kids. If it's angering the conservatives, the kids are getting it. <laughs> but apparently it has to do with some, like, I guess the, the oil company is some evil oil company that's doing some bad news. Uh, and so all the conservatives are flipping their shit. So this article was apparently written a day ago. Lauren Gunter. What did the so what's the title? Here? Alberta's war room's misguided fight against the Netflix Bigfoot film results in a black eye for oil industry. It's, it's so Gunter, Gunter with the good take. Oh my god, Gunter might be making the same take. That, well, not the same take, but just how fucking stupid this is. How, how like it cuts against all the shit. So let's. I I almost want to watch the the first video of Jason Kenny, and then we'll then we'll check out Lauren Gunter. Let's do that. So this is Kenny on the, on the film. So you can dismiss this as, quotes merely a kid's show, but it's clear that they developed content designed to defame uh, in, the, in the most vicious way possible, in the, in the impressionable minds of kids, the largest industry in the province. And so we can pr just pretend that's not a reality. Just ignore it. Just... <laughs> Like, <laughs> I just, I like, I love the idea of like, some people were like, we should remove these horrible image of black people from Dr. Seuss. Well, rather than remove the image, just no longer print these books that showed horrible depictions of stereotypes of racial groups. And the conservatives lost their fucking mind that this is cancel culture. And here's Jason Kenney. A leader of a conservative party going, 
what like that this movie is defaming the oil industry <laughs> and how horrible it's tainting it's tainting the minds of the kids just say that big Hollywood operations should be able to depict <laughs> the oil and gas industry as, in the words of Netflix, quotes, evil, that oil and gas companies plot to murder people <laughs> and are organized <laughs> purposefully to uh, destroy the environment. That is the depiction made in this kid's show. That's a fucking rad kid's show. <laughs> the oil companies going around murdering people. You know, but the thing is... <laughs> The oil companies aren't going around murdering people in, like, like, not that ironic of a way. Yo, nobody tell this dude about Fern Gully. <laughs> or what's the other one? Avatar, which was, like, based on Fern Gully? Or not based, the, the vaguely similar sort of, like, plots. Or no one, no one tell him about Final Fantasy VII, my guy. <laughs> the protagonists were terrorists. We're blowing up the, uh, uh, what was it, Mako? Just oil or, you know. I mean, like, the, the funny thing is, it's like, that's been a huge trope in, like, movies for, like, a while. Even in kids' show of, like, a pro-environment message. And yet he's talking about, it's like, oh, my God, the Netflix is brainwashing our kids by telling us that, the, like, the, the oil companies are evil. And it's like, the oil companies are evil. They're fucking terrible. Look, like, look at what we're doing to our indigenous populations because of the oil companies. Look what we're doing to the planet because of oil companies. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus fucking Christ. Our sweet, our sweet, sweet oil companies that do nothing but give us hugs and kisses. Um, and I think we have every, uh, Albertans and, and people uh, who defend our oil and gas workers have every right uh, to set the record straight, to put a spotlight on that, on those kinds of outrageous lies and that kind of defamation, whether it is outrageous lies and defamation. It's a children's movie. <laughs> can you even, can you, can you defame an industry? Because I'm sure in this movie, it's not like they're like Shell Company or uh, BP, you know. I'm sure it's just like generic oil company for TV movie. Like, is that defamation? De like, can you def like, is if I'm trying to think of a movie here. Did Terminator defame bounty hunters? <laughs> or if there's like, a, I don't know, some carpenter who like becomes evil to like, does that character therefore like defame carpenters? I've never, I like, I've never heard that wording before. As if like portrayal in a in a movie is defamatory. Is an entertainment show targeting kids, or it's a hard news show targeting Hello? grown ups? Hello? Uh, if they are lying, um, and particularly with this kind How of vicious sort sort of death. I'm good. I can share the share the video with you. Are you ready to would be appreciated. hear about how the oil companies are being defamed by this Bigfoot movie? Listen, they are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so stupid. Same with any time that there is a bad guy that um, has a gun that's defaming the weapons industry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Every time a gun is used poorly, it's it's a defamation. Every single Iron Man movie was defaming uh, the arms industry as well. Um, Joker defames professional class. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Nick. I appreciate it. Oh, God. Oh, my God. This is so stupid. Jason, Ken I will say for those who don't know, Jason Kenny wrote the foreword to Ezra Levant's very first book. For a little bit of podcast lore, and particularly you know that with this. Oh, sorry, go for it. Do you know that Jason Kenny is? First of all, his father was a failed uh, liberal MPP, I think, or MP. <laughs> um, 
and that was like one of the big things that has spawned Jason Kenny's like hatred of the liberals. Because his dad failed, or is because his dad didn't win the election. Oh. <laughs> um, and uh, did you see that he's putting his grandfather into the Alberta education system as like an example of some sort of musical talent or something? When like nobody's heard of the guy, he just. Like, he was, like, a very, very minor musician, but now he's being put into the provincial education system. You, these, these people. Money, money rots brains for generations. It just yeah. rots their brains. Turns them to mush. Yeah, the, the, the reason, like, I, I'm guessing that Ezra Levant and him were friends. I don't know how much they're friends anymore. Like even even on the podcast, Ezra doesn't really speak highly of Kenny. He does say that Kenny is his favorite of all the premieres. But even like on the show, he's he's more critical of Kenny than praising. Uh, in part, right now because of the whole lockdown thing and, and the arresting of pastor the the pastor in Edmonton, he really hates uh, Kenny over that. Yeah, but was yeah. Sorry, do you know? Before Wild Rose and the Progressive Conservatives united in Alberta, do you know if, I assume he was Wild Rose Party? Do you know? No, I think he stood with the, the PCs. Okay, wow. Yeah. You would think that if he's friends with Ezra, he would be on the further right section of the party. No, even even Ezra was a, is against uh, spoiler parties. Although, although it's like weird because... Like Ezra, Ezra was, and, and actually this might explain why he hates like uh, these additional conservative parties. He used to be a member of the Reform Party. Oh. And so my guess is he saw the Reform go from official opposition to losing terribly. And it sort of realized that like that led to Jean Chrétien and Paul Martin and the like liberal legacy ruling us for a long time. And therefore he was like third party spoilers bad, I think is the lesson he learned from that. But the uh they both worked, I think, for the Fraser Institute. I think they both worked for that. And the Fraser Institute is like an oil funded, I think they even received Coke money, uh think tank. Think tank. And uh, that's where Ezra wrote his first book, and uh, Kenny was working there as well, and uh, wrote the forward for it. I can't even remember the name of it. I should look it up in a second. I'm going to put play. Kind of vicious sort, sort of defamation, accusing oil companies not just of their, not, 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 you know, not raising the environmental implications of, of, of hydrocarbons, but accusing oil companies of basically being the, the, the mafia of, 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 of conspiring to murder people, including kids, I think that's pretty darn serious. <laughs> I think that's pretty darn serious. That's right. The oil companies are coming for your children at gunpoint. You know. Of course, it's post-media. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the Edmonton Journal. Like, I don't know if that, like, they they just played his own words. And they made him look ridiculous. So I don't know if this is a a win or a lose but let's yeah. be real it's like depressing as hell but almost all local media in our country is post media now. youth quake youth quake was the name of the book and it was printed within the uh the fraser institute here it is youth quake it's all oh, we can we can flip through a few pages because this is archived on the friggin internet Oh, wait for it. Here's the, uh, is it in the, uh, so it's, it was published by the Fraser Institute. And then, uh, yeah, look at this. Jason Kenney, president of the Canadian Taxpayer Federation, wrote the foreword for his first, first book. God. Youth Quake by Ezra Levant. That's actually a pretty decent cover, though, I gotta say. I guess so. And I think it's about how, like, kids in the future won't pay taxes because taxes are tyranny. <laughs> oh, God. 
I am. So we're going to read quick. Uh, let's see how long. Okay, it's not too long. So we got a we got a Lauren Gunter article in the Toronto Sun. And the reason why I want to read it is because Lauren Gunter is frequently on the show. And so I am it, based on this title. It tells me that he doesn't like what Kenny is doing here, which surprises me. So here it goes. What did the provincial government's Canadian Energy Centre hope to achieve when it tried to pressure Netflix to remove the animated children's movie Bigfoot Family from its streaming services? Whatever the CEC imagined it might accomplish, they have suffered the fate of most prospective movie banners. They have both failed to get the film taken down and made themselves look like church basement busybodies of the 1950s and 1960s who donned flowered bonnets and white gloves and set out to ban profanity and glimpses of buttocks from the silver screen. <laughs> All right. This is like maybe the first thing Lauren Gunter's written that I might agree with. Bigfoot family tells the story of a forest family living in the fictitious Rock Valley. Oh, I love her getting some detailed description here. A Bigfoot, a bear, a raccoon, a squirrel, and a human mom and boy when an oil tycoon proposes to drill in their mystical valley. The father, Bigfoot, sets out to stop him, but disappears. Most of the rest of the film follows the family as they go looking for him. Is it anti-oil? Yeah, sort of. In the way lots of kids' movies are, corporate bashers. <laughs> yeah, Fern, Fern Gully. At it again. When our kids were little, there were lots of movies with an anti-corporate bias. One of the Land Before Time series comes to mind. Really? What? How was the land before time anti-corporate? Was there like a dinosaur corporation? <laughs> so what? Is As it, a kid is... who is obsessed with dinosaurs, I don't remember any corporations or anything that could be close to that in Land Before Time. The meteor I had that so like, many of those movies. It's the earth that makes the dinosaurs go extinct was actually sent by an oil company. A dinosaur falls into some tar and so oil bath. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I can't remember which one specifically, which tells you how unsuccessful the subliminal message was. <laughs> well, either that or you just made this up. Maybe maybe fact checked yourself, Lauren, before you write your article. <laughs> And I have no intention of sitting through those god-awful, cheery dino flicks again. Damn. I even recall an episode of the Smurfs in which an unscrupulous developer wanted to bulldoze the little blue elves village to make way for condos in a mall. Something commercial. Bigfoot Family at least features superb animation and endearing characters to go along with its somewhat cliched story. If I were an oil worker or the owner of an independent oil field service company... Oh yeah. The, the, uh... Noted independent oil field service companies. Would I be tired of the battering my industry has taken from smug, uninformed environmentalists over the past couple decades? You're damn right I would be. There we go. There's the Lorna. I grew to love. As an ordinary Albertan not involved in the ener energy industry, I'm fed up with the preening and sniping of angry green zealots. If I made my living from oil and gas, I might even cheer the government's efforts to make Netflix stop showing Bigfoot family except that every other similar campaign I can recall has only ever succeeded in making the Target movie more popular. I mean, he's not wrong. This is like the Streisand effect, isn't it? Like where Streisand tried to sue people from selling pictures of her home, home or something like this, and then the pictures just like spread like wildfire over the internet. Sure. <laughs> Did you know that they made a Land Before Time movie in 2016? How many Land Before Times are there? There were 14. Jesus. And Wikipedia still says that it is ongoing, so there might be more. It started in 1988. Jesus. Setting up fake banning campaigns has even been employed as a marketing trick by movie studios to boost ticket sales for dud films. Started rumor that the film is so risque the censors are trying to ban it, and more people will go to see what the fuss is about. Or to be titillated. Frankly, if I were the UCP government or the CEC, I'd put more effort into debunking documentaries such as An Inconvenient Truth and Before the Flood. 
and documentaries is in scare quotes there because these aren't real documentaries. Says the guy who goes on a show who played the Epoch Times China virus movie. <laughs> and notice I said debunk, not ban. Counter those movies with messages of your own, not censorship campaigns. Because they went after a charming little kids film, the CEC has actually done more damage to the image of the oil industry and the province. We look like backwards meanies who aren't very sophisticated and can't get our priorities straight. Tom Olson, the CEC's managing director and former Premier Ed Stelmack's press secretary, insists the campaign of D-list Bigfoot family has been a resounding success. Yes, it has for the movie producer. The film, which fell off the Netflix top 10 two weeks after it was released in February, has shot back into the top 10 ever since the Alberta government started fighting to have it banned, and my kids contributed to it. The CEC's research arm does excellent statistical work on the impact of the energy industry of Canada's economy. Yeah, no, you see, he's not wrong, even though, like, Lauren Gunter is approaching it from the opposite side of me. But he's not wrong about the general gist of the hypocrisy here, which is, like, for the people who go on and on and groan on and on about cancel culture shit, like, for Kenny to be putting up this fight is so fucking stupid. Over a children's film that's apparently pro-environmentalist. There were 15 Land Before Time video games. <laughs> oh, my God. And no Gremlins 3. Exactly. We got fucking robbed. No Gremlins 3? Nick, don't you dare insult Land Before Time. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we could have gotten a... We could have gotten a Gremlin in Jurassic Park. Or a Jaws-like movie with a Gremlin shark. Hello, my rebels. Hello, my rebels. I'm a good boy. I'm a weirdo.